Hi, I am Dr. Felice Gersh, your integrative OBGYN, joining you this time to talk about a topic that totally peeves me. Now, many of you know that as an integrative OBGYN, I work really hard every day in my office to help all of my women to optimize their health. Now, I think you may have heard, and it's true, that estrogen is my favorite hormone. I talk all over the world about what estrogen does, its benefits, how it's made, how it's distributed, the receptor function, the degradation, everything about estrogen because it's the hormone of life. So you can just imagine how I feel when it's maligned, which it is constantly. Well, one of the ways that it's maligned, among many, is the use of the phrase estrogen dominance. That sounds so harmless. It's just whatever, estrogen dominance. Well, what the heck does that mean anyway? Well, I don't know what it means because it's used in so many different ways, but the ultimate feeling that it sort of connotes is estrogen is bad. Down with estrogen. Well, that is not the correct message that we should be delivering to women. So there are three very common misconceptions about the words estrogen dominance. And I want to discuss that and put this phrase, hopefully, to rest forever. I never use that phrase because no one knows what it means. It just delivers this message that estrogen is bad. So what are those three misconceptions? Well, one, that when you say estrogen dominance, it implies that the ovaries are making too much estrogen. Number two, that estrogen should be reduced. Less is better. Number three, that estrogen is bad for you. We don't want it. Let's just try to get rid of it. So let's go back. Number one, that the ovaries are making too much estrogen. Well, in reality, that happens very infrequently. In fact, there's only really one time in a woman's life, a phase of life called the perimenopause or the menopausal transition, when women actually can very briefly make too much estrogen in the form of estradiol, the estrogen that's made from the ovaries in too large of an amount. It's a very interesting time, the perimenopause, because the brain, which is the master sensor of all the hormones, it can perceive when the ovaries are producing too little because the egg supply is diminished and the ovaries are making less. Well, the brain puts out signals to the pituitary, telling the pituitary gland, please tell the ovaries to make more estrogen. We do not have enough in this body. So the pituitary gland puts out its signaling hormones, LH, luteinizing hormone, and FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, to communicate to the ovaries to make more estrogen. In the early stages of the menopausal transition, the ovaries still have enough eggs so that if pushed hard enough with these stimulating hormones, it will produce more estrogen. And sometimes it will produce too much. I've seen some levels as high as 800. Normally, the level doesn't get above around 350. So that is a definitely high level of estrogen. And during the perimenopause, because of these swings and sometimes high levels, women will have a lot of breast tenderness. The ups and downs can trigger migraines and some retention of fluid, so sort of edema. So the perimenopause is a unique stage when, yes, there can actually be an overproduction of the hormone estradiol. Short-lived, but it can happen. That's the only time. And that is a unique time. So what about this other use of the word estrogen dominance? I told you the ovaries are not producing too much during any other stage of a woman's reproductive life. So what are they using the word estrogen dominance to even mean? Because most people assume it means too much estrogen from the ovaries. Well, sometimes it could be the body isn't eliminating estrogen properly. The detoxification process that goes on in the liver, where the elimination is not done properly. And that can happen. So 
I call a spade a spade. So rather than using this grab bag term of estrogen dominance, just say what you mean. If it's perimenopause, say there's an overshoot of these gonadotropins and the ovaries can make too much estradiol, but just during this short phase of life. If it's that you have a compromised gut and liver for detoxification is not being accomplished properly, or you're making abnormal metabolites because you don't have the proper liver function. Those are unique situations, but it has nothing to do with the ovaries. It has nothing to do with the benefits of estradiol, the dominant estrogen made by the ovaries. It has to do with a gut and liver problem. So that can cause wrong products being made from estrogen through the liver, circulating again instead of being produced into other metabolites that then get eliminated through the bile duct and then pooped out with the stool. So let's just explain what you mean by estrogen dominance. Is it that you're having detoxification problems, elimination problems, constipation, liver disease? Then let's talk about what you're really saying. It's not that estradiol is being made in too large of a quantity. It's that the body is improperly detoxifying estrogen. That doesn't make estrogen bad. It makes liver disease and gut problems bad. Now, what about the next one? This idea that you have too much estradiol or too much estrogen. Nobody even distinguishes between that. And therefore, estradiol or estrogen is bad. It's just intrinsically bad to have too much. And therefore, we should try to get rid of it. Well, you want to have proper functioning of your gut and your liver to properly detoxify so you don't get abnormal metabolites. You don't want that for any product in the body, anything at all, but you certainly don't want it for estrogen either. So let's not say that estrogen is bad or certainly estradiol, which is wonderful. Let's just say that you need to properly eliminate the excessive amounts of metabolites that don't belong. So we need to work on gut health. So the idea that estrogen should be reduced, that you don't want as much estrogen made by the ovaries is totally wrong. So the idea that estrogen is bad for women is totally wrong. These misconceptions that the ovaries are making too much estrogen, that only happens during the perimenopause, it's brief and it's not dangerous. It can be uncomfortable. I will give you that. And the idea that estrogen is bad for you. Well, evil metabolites that may have carcinogenic properties, but not the estrogen made by the ovaries. So we need to have good, healthy gut microbiomes. We need to have healthy functioning livers, but we don't want to malign our beautiful functioning ovaries and the estradiol that it makes. We don't want to get rid of our estrogen when it's made by the ovaries. We want to get detoxified estrogen out in a proper way. So once again, the three misconceptions that estradiol or estrogen is made in large excessive amounts from the ovary, only true for the perimenopause, not at any other stages. Number two, that estrogen should be reduced and eliminated as much as possible. No, we love estrogen. And three, estrogen is bad for you. Only estrogen that's not made from the ovaries can be bad for you. So what is that? Well, a lot of the symptoms that people talk about with estrogen dominance are things like breast tenderness, bloating, PMS, and inflammatory kinds of processes where they don't feel well. You have fibromyalgia, you have fatigue syndromes and sleep problems. Those are actually problems of pervasive systemic inflammation. So here's a really important point. When the body is inflamed, the areas of the body, like adipose fat tissue and other organs that have the capacity because of the enzyme aromatase that's present in them to make estrogen on their own. Remember, only the ovaries always make one form of estrogen 
estradiol, but these other tissues like fat tissue can make large quantities of estrone. Estrone works differently than estradiol, which has a balanced effect on the estrogen receptors. Estrone, on the other hand, only works on the alpha receptor. And these receptors have different functions and different prevalences in different parts of the body. So you get a very different effect and a very different estrogen environment when you make estrogen from fat tissue. And that is what happens when you have an inflamed body. And people who are metabolically unhealthy, diabetics, obese people, and older women, postmenopausal women, they become chronically, systemically inflamed. And inflammation upregulates the function of this enzyme aromatase. So the body makes more of this estrogen called estrone. Now, that's part of the, we'll say, the survival mechanism of humans because estrogen modulates or regulates the immune system and deals with damage to tissues like trauma, injuries, and pathogens like bacteria and viruses getting into the body. And it creates an inflammatory response, but it's all regulated. So when the infection is cleared, when the damage is now being dealt with, then the body goes into the healing phases, inflammation, resolution, and healing. Estrogen corrects and modulates all these different phases of the inflammatory process. But for that to happen, you need the ovarian-produced estrogen, estradiol, not estrone. Estrone kind of gets you stuck in the pro-inflammatory state and sort of feeds the inflammation machine. So when you talk about estrogen dominance and you're talking about too much estrogen being made by peripheral tissues, particularly adipose tissue, that's actually true. But the reason I don't like the words estrogen dominance is that what we're talking about is really the body being inflamed. And all the problems are due to pervasive systemic inflammation. So you got to deal with the reason for that inflammation. And, you know, you got to address that. The estrogen is a byproduct of the inflammation, not the cause of it and not the underlying problem. As well, endocrine disruptors, chemicals in the environment like plastics that have phthalates, bisphenols like bisphenol A, pesticides, heavy metals, all can act on estrogen receptors. But they're not the same as the estrogen made by the ovaries, which has remarkable benefits for a woman's body. These are chemical endocrine disruptors that interfere with every potential aspect of estrogen, its production, distribution, binding to receptors, degradation, elimination, and it interferes with the normal functioning of estrogen. And estrogen is about everything and every organ system in the body doing the right thing. So it interferes with basically virtually anything and everything in the body. That's not what you should be using the words estrogen dominance for. You should use the words endocrine disruptors in the body. But when women have high volumes of these chemicals, they say she has estrogen dominance. So people think it means that the ovaries are making too much estrogen. And then they hate estrogen and they think you got to get rid of estrogen. Estrogen is evil. Less is more. More improvement for the body. More happiness. More health. That is the opposite of what is true. Estrogen is the hormone of life, of healing itself. The last thing we want to do is get rid of the estrogen produced by our ovaries, estradiol. Yes, we want to get our gut to detoxify estrogen and eliminate it properly and make the proper metabolites. Yes, we want to get rid of endocrine disruptors, those horrible chemicals that interfere with estrogen signaling, manufacture degradation and receptor function, all those things in the body. But we want to embrace our ovaries and embrace the estrogen made by the ovaries, which give life, which maintain all the different functions and optimize health in the female body. So I don't like the term estrogen dominance because it doesn't explain what people are thinking about. Sometimes people use the words estrogen dominance to mean that they're not making enough progesterone. By the way, high levels of inflammation suppress the production of progesterone. And what we really want is proper hormone balance in the body. 
We want all the hormones to be present in the right relationships, in the right balance. And we want the rhythms of hormones, estrogen, progesterone, to come and go, ebb and flow, the way nature intended. But we don't want to use these misleading terms like estrogen dominance, which really makes so many women and physicians think estrogen is bad. The ovaries make too much. We need to get rid of it. It's harmful for us. Please embrace estrogen, the estradiol made by the ovaries, the hormone of life, and down with endocrine disruptors, down with unhealthy livers and guts, and let's celebrate what should be celebrated, healthy functioning ovaries and balanced hormones. Thanks and have a great day.